As things are only getting worse for the Palestinians, let's talk about Israel's second violent attack on the Palestinians and the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Here are five things you need to know about what's happening. Number one, Jerusalem Day. Today, Israelis are celebrating Jerusalem Day, which includes an annual parade celebrating the day Israel illegally captured and took full control over the Palestinian East Jerusalem in 1967. For today's festivities, thousands of extremist Israeli settlers are attempting to break into the Al-Aqsa compound. Here's footage of them trying to break down one of the gates to enter. Notice how the Israeli police are gently pushing them away to get them to stop. If these were Palestinians trying to break into any establishment, they'd be shot. For sure. This is a prime example of how Israeli occupation forces protect anything extreme Israeli settlers do, but use weapons and brutal force on Palestinians who are praying at Al-Aqsa or peacefully protesting. The end goal of these extremist Israeli settlers is to eventually divide the Al-Aqsa Mosque into Jewish and Muslim areas the same way they did with Ibrahimi Mosque in Hebron decades ago. They believe they have historic and religious claims to Al-Aqsa. And this Jerusalem Day parade storming through Al-Aqsa is just proof of their objective. Number two, Sheikh Jarrah as of today. To further celebrate today's Jerusalem Day, hundreds of extremist Israeli settlers gathered to storm the Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood to further intimidate the Palestinian natives. The Palestinian families living in Sheikh Jarrah are scared that these extremists are gonna try to infiltrate their homes. And yet, the Israeli occupation forces start arresting who? The Palestinians living in Sheikh Jarrah, of course. Not the extremist Israeli settlers, no. The Palestinians who live in Sheikh Jarrah. Also, the Israeli Supreme Court announced that they're postponing the Sheikh Jarrah evictions and will be setting a new date within the next 30 days, which isn't a win. They're just pushing out the eviction. It's just Israel delaying the eviction until the world is no longer watching them. Which is why we need to keep putting pressure on political leaders and continuing to share what's happening on social media. Number three, widespread protests. Beyond just the protests at Sheikh Jarrah, now Palestinians all throughout Israel and Palestine are protesting because of the Al-Aqsa attacks and Sheikh Jarrah. There are protests in the major cities of the Palestinian territories like in Nablus, Ramallah, and Gaza, as well as in major cities in Israel, or what we Palestinians call 48, or 48 in Arabic, which was the year the state of Israel was established and all the current cities in Israel were stolen from the Palestinian people. People. These are cities like Haifa, Yaffa, and Nazareth. And Palestinians living in those cities now are all protesting. And to no surprise, Palestinians in those cities of Israel, or 48, who are peacefully protesting, are being brutally attacked and arrested by the Israeli police. They're throwing tear gas, stun grenades, physically assaulting Palestinians, everything they're doing to Palestinians in the Palestinian territories. Number four, preparing to fight. Palestinians from all over gathered at Al-Aqsa last night to rally up and prepare for what was to come the next morning. Jerusalem Day, the day they knew Israeli settlers were gonna try to break in and storm Al-Aqsa. To prepare for the Israeli settlers storming in, as well as for any attacks by the Israeli occupation forces, the Palestinians did what they needed to do to protect themselves and their holy mosque using the only weapon they have, the rock, the long-standing symbol of the Palestinian struggle. They didn't bring guns or grenades, they brought rocks from the land of their ancestors. Rocks that are older than the country of Israel. They blocked out the entrance of the praying areas using wood and scraps of furniture to try and keep the Israelis out. They built makeshift walls throughout the outside compound so they'd have somewhere to hide in case the Israelis start shooting. A lot of them covered their faces not only to protect them from the grenades, but also to protect their identity because they know the Israeli forces track the Palestinians who protest and rebel against them. They target Palestinian individuals by tracking social media content or by drones and literally go looking around for these Palestinians so they can arrest them. And that's why identity protection is really important for the Palestinians. The Palestinians did all this to have to prepare to protect their mosque. This is a perfect representation of the imbalance and asymmetry of power between Israel and Palestine. One side has the latest weapon technology funded by the US and the other side has rocks. So don't you dare try to say that Palestinians are the reason why there's chaos on the land. And finally, number five, Israel's second attack on Al-Aqsa. Again, to no surprise, this morning, Israeli occupation forces stormed Al-Aqsa in an attempt to clear out the compounds. And they went even harder than they did two days ago in the first round of attacks. They stormed in under an enormous cover of tear gas, rubber bullets literally the size of a palm, and just a parade of stun grenades deliberately thrown at the faces of Palestinians. Just listen to the number of explosions in this clip. 
literally nauseating. Just as many attacks inside the Al-Aqsa prayer. I'll just run through all the crap that the Israeli occupation forces are doing right now. They had no hesitation attacking the women's side of the praying area. Literally like... Oh my God. They even used windows in the mosque that are probably like three stories high to throw the grenades through. They officially confiscated the keys to all the doors in Al-Aqsa from Sheikh Omar Kiswani, who is the head of Al-Aqsa. And beyond their just standard wrongful arrests, they became more violent with the arrests by beating them up before they arrested them. And the worst of all things, and this just shows how inhumane the Israeli occupation forces are, while they were attacking the Palestinians, they blocked all Palestinian ambulances and any form of medical aid from entering Al-Aqsa. The Palestinians who were stuck inside the mosque and too injured to get up and get out, they couldn't breathe in there from all the explosions and the smoke set off from all the grenades. The people were literally suffocating inside there because of the Israeli occupation forces. Today's attacks alone left over 460 Palestinians seriously injured. 460 injured people who had no access to immediate medical care. The Palestinians were carrying each other out using outdoor floor mats. That's how bad it was. But Alhamdulillah, by the will of Allah and the unshaken strength and bravery and dedication the Palestinian people have to Al-Aqsa and their religion, the Israeli forces gave up and left the Al-Aqsa compound. For now, though, knowing them, they show up whenever, however they want, start attacking Palestinians. This was the aftermath. Just look at how many grenades and rubberized steel bullets were left on the ground because of the Israeli soldiers. Right away, because Palestinians have just a ridiculous amount of willpower, they started to clean the mosque in preparation for the afternoon prayer, like nothing happened. Just so much faith and dedication to Allah and the mosque and, oh my God. However, despite the Israeli forces initially not letting the extremist Israeli settlers enter the Muslim quarter, which is where Al-Aqsa is, and have their little parade, they eventually just let them in. Thousands and thousands of extremist Israeli settlers that much closer from entering Al-Aqsa. Right after, they completely shot up the entire mosque and injured almost 500 people. Only God knows what's about to go down. Al-Aqsa. Our third holiest site, which I cannot stress enough, has literally become a war zone because of the Israeli occupation forces and the extremist Israeli settlers. These are the last few days of the holy month of Ramadan and Palestinians are spending it getting shot at, getting beat up, getting arrested, washing tear gas out of their eyes, or sitting at the hospital. Why is that happening? Because no country in the world cares enough about the Palestinian people to do anything. I feel nothing but raging anger and disgust for all the leaders of the Muslim world. They've not only abandoned Al-Aqsa, Islam's third most holy site, but they've also abandoned the entire Palestinian people and left them to protect the mosque. Not Palestinian soldiers or Palestinians with weapons, just your average Palestinian living under illegal occupation, fighting off one of the strongest defense forces in all of the world, Israel. Instead, we have the government of Bahrain and Sudan and Morocco and the United Arab Emirates making peace deals with Israel and normalizing relations with them. Just a strong, firm middle finger to the Palestinian people as if they haven't already suffered enough. The Muslim leaders are trash.